throw out your Ibanez TS9 tube skimmers and forget the Boss DS1 distortion pedal because this pedal is the only pedal you're ever going to need. Today, we're diving into the Violet pedal, a pedal that promises to combine the best of both worlds with overdrive and distortion. But does it really live up to the hype? Stick around as I put it to the test and I'm going to find out if it really can replace two of the most iconic guitar pedals ever. So what makes the Violet pedal special? Let's talk about the artist behind the JHS Violet pedal, Larry Basilio. Larry is an incredibly talented Brazilian guitarist, celebrated for her soulful playing and expressive tone. She's known for blending genres from rock to jazz and even blues, but what stands out most is her unique ability to create melody and emotion in every note. Her playing style is smooth yet powerful, and her tone reflects that balance. It's clean, it's articulate, and it's rich with just the right amount of bite. The Violet pedal was designed with Larry's sound in mind. Working closely with JHS, she wanted a pedal that could capture the subtle warmth of an overdrive and the power of distortion all in one pedal unit. This pedal gives players the same tonal flexibility Larry has in her music, allowing them to move between smooth, clean tones and full-bodied, saturated distortion. As Larry says, why would I need words when my guitar speaks for me? With the Violet pedal, she's given us a way to capture that voice. Before we get into the Violet pedal, let's take a look at what overdrive and distortion pedals bring to your tone. Overdrive is all about emulating the natural breakup of an amp when it's pushed hard. Then we go into the hand-wired Tube Screamer, which is I've toured with for years and years. Creating a warm, gritty sound that enhances dynamics, but doesn't fully saturate your tone. It's subtle, responsive, and it adds a nice edge while still keeping the essence of your clean tone. The Tube Screamer is an infamous overdrive pedal, well known for its warm, mid-range focus overdrive that pushes your tone just enough to give it some bite without completely overwhelming it, making it perfect for blues and rock. But I've been using a tube skimmer for years for metal tones and it sounds great. Most people would think you'd use a distortion pedal for metal, when in fact most people use an overdrive to boost their tone without oversaturating it and making it muddy and cloudy. Distortion, on the other hand, takes things further by adding heavier gain. This results in a more intense, saturated sound, and it's a more aggressive effect that creates a thick, powerful tone, perfect for heavier styles of music, like metal. Famous distortion pedals include the Boss DS1, which is known for its aggressive, gritty distortion, and it's been a go-to for everything from punk, grunge, and all the way to metal. Now, whilst the Tube Streamer and the Boss DS1 have their strengths, each one has its limitations. The Tube Streamer on one hand can feel overly mid-focused and it does lack flexibility for broader tonal shaping. I mean, it only has three knobs on it, so you can't really do a lot of EQing on that. Whilst the DS1 sometimes comes across as too harsh and it doesn't really work for lots of different styles, it really only suits the things that it's good at. That's where the Violet pedal steps in. The Violet pedal addresses these issues by combining the best of both worlds in one unit. So you get the smooth, creamy overdrives from the Tube Screamer and the epic, harsh, high gain sound from the Boss DS1. And I think it looks nicer too. But it doesn't stop there. It has a unique three band EQ as well, which both the other pedals don't have. And it features a flexible mid frequency control, which again, both the other pedals don't have. The Violet pedal goes beyond what those individual pedals offer. It lets you customize your tone more precisely, all the way from subtle warmth to super heavy high gain distortion. It also does that in just one pedal, so you don't have to have two, and there's no clumsy battery compartment, so you don't need to worry about running out of power as well. Let's start with a bit of fun by doing exactly what every guitarist says you shouldn't do, cranking everything up to 10. It takes longer than I thought it would. Now, usually this is a total recipe for chaos, but uh, let's see how the Violet Distortion handles it and why it's usually best to avoid this approach. Didn't sound that bad, actually. Oh, and I also forgot to tell you what my signal chain was. I've got my Lepsky Custom with Fishman Moderns going into a 5150 Iconic on the Clean channel, which is going into a Two Notes Captor X load box into my computer, and I'm using a GGD plugin for the impulse responses. When I was first starting out playing guitar, 
I pretty much would do this. I'd just turn all of them up to 10 and be like, sounds great to me. <laughs> it's just a bit too much. Putting everything on 10 is not a good idea. Where do you go from 10? You can never go backwards. It's always best to go in at maybe five and you can always boost it later on if you want to. How varied is the violet pedal? Can it give us the desired tone we want across three different genres? Blues, rock, and a bit of metal? Let's find out. So like I said earlier, we're playing this through the 5150 Iconic Clean Channel. So all of the gain and distortion you're going to hear is coming out of the violet pedal itself. Let's start off putting all the dials to a neutral position instead of everything at 10, because that was crazy. And we're going to go with some rock, heavy rock, that kind of stuff, and see how well it does that. This is how it sounds normally with nothing on. Pedal engaged. Sounds pretty good, even at neutral. Also, I have to add the 5150 Iconic EQ is also neutral. So low, mid and high are all at 12 o'clock. I haven't changed those either. For the rock kind of sound, I guess we want a low gain, but a high, high uh, volume. And then we've got the bass, middle and trebles down here. See, in metal, I'd probably scoop the mids quite a lot, but in rock and stuff, I probably wouldn't want to do that. I probably actually want quite a lot of mids, maybe not very much treble. I guess if, also if you wanted to do like a solo boost, you could turn the gain up there for that. Sounds really good. I really like this pedal. Um, it's both high gain and not at the same time, which I think is really cool. Works really well for that kind of rock and roll sound. Let's see how well it does bluesy sounds. So I said blues as well, even though I don't play blues. I've looked it up on the internet to know how to play blues. Um, but we want to see how versatile this pedal actually is. So what I want to try straight away is turning the gain completely off because I notice a lot of blues sound is neck pickup and then the kind of clean boost that the pedal is going to give us. Remember, let's just show you again. Clean. That's completely clean. That's the amp with no pedal. Turn the pedal on, but with the distortion fully off, with the volume up a little bit, then we get a clean boost. So we're still getting the clean sound that we had, but it's slightly boosted. So then if I wanted to play some solos or, you know, have a go at playing Johnny Be Good, I would turn the gain up a little bit. And then, as you can hear, we've got a bit more distortion now. Which I think sounds pretty spot on. But also, sounds still quite good for rock and roll and stuff. I could even push this as far as playing metal. We're not here to play metal, we're here to play blues. So I'll dial it back a bit and then go to... So I'm quite surprised that this distortion section is basically on zero. But it's giving me a lot of punch. It might be to do with the pickups that I've got because these are active pickups, the Fishman Moderns. Um, if you had single core Fender, maybe it sounds slightly different. But I don't have one of those, so I'm trying it out with one of these. I really like how um, much clarity the pedal has. It doesn't sound muddy at all. There's a lot of um, dynamics, which is great. Even with uh, active pickups, which generally don't have dynamics and just fully compressed. This pedal gives this amp a lot more life than just clean channel. That sounds quite muddy or like mid-range. This kind of opens it up a bit. I think the mid frequency does a lot of that as well. 
So it definitely does blues. I can't really do blues, but I had a go at it. Um, like I said, I really, really, really like how rich and dynamic it sounds. It's a really nice boost pedal. Pretty much replace any boost pedal I would use because this is so dynamic and it's got high gain and it's an overdrive. We've already heard that this pretty much can do metal already. This is the tone I would want. <laughs> But I want to see how well this pedal stacks up on top of an amp. That didn't do anything. On top of an amp distortion as well. So I would put the distortion on this, overdrive there, and then use this like a boost pedal. So I would turn the distortion down, turn the volume up, and then it gives us more dials. Whereas a tube streamer only has tone level and distortion. This, or gain even, this has uh, mids, highs, and trebles as well. Mids, basses, and trebles. So that's the amp without the pedal on. It still sounds okay. But I want more. There we go, we probably need a noise gate as well. Let's just remind ourselves how it sounds without it. Wow, it's doing quite a lot. It's doing quite a lot of the heavy lifting. It still sounds great, but this is not really gainy enough for the riffs I'm playing, so... There we go. There's a noise gate on now. Let's change its reduction because it's on quite high. sounded incredible um i'm a big fan of a tube screamer i always put a tube screamer on an amp on a plug-in version on a real version on a, a fractal fm9 that kind of thing and that sounded really good i definitely preferred it to playing it on the clean channel but i think i like playing with both and stacking those and using four tracks two left and right would sound absolutely massive so does the jhs violet pedal actually replace the ibanez tube screamer and the boss ds1 on your pedal board for me, it definitely does replace the Tube Streamer and the DS1. I would definitely put it on my pedal board in front of any amp or plugin. The fact that it has more versatile controls as a mid frequency, as EQ, it can be used as a clean boost. We used it to play blues, rock and roll, all the way up to metal. It sounded great through the amp on a clean channel. It also sounded great through the amp on a distortion channel as a boost, like a traditional Tube Streamer. But I think it did a lot more than my Tube Streamer would, and I would definitely replace it. I'd say this pedal is great for every user, beginner user, pro users, intermediate. If I had this pedal when I was first starting out, I think I would have had endless possibilities. I didn't own a DS1 or a Tube Screamer initially. I used to just turn everything up to 10, like I said earlier. Uh, but if I had this when I was starting out now, so any beginners there that are watching, I would definitely get one of these. Um, it means also I don't need to have two pedals on a pedal board. Don't have to mess around with which order you put them in. That kind of stuff changes a lot. The fact that it could be dialed all the way back and be a clean boost, but also dialed all the way up to be a really, really heavy gain sound for metal 
was impressive. I actually genuinely wasn't expecting any of this to be as good as it was, um, especially with uh, Laurie's playing and her style. It's interesting to see that her playing style and the pedal she's designed actually can cover lots of bases. Definitely worth the money. It's a pedal board saver for space because you only got one and it runs off of a power supply like most pedals do. You don't need to worry about batteries in the back as well. And it looks great. It's light. It's durable. It's sturdy. It's a really nice color. Pink and purple are two of my favorite colors. And it sounds amazing. I was absolutely blown away. My expectations were completely exceeded. So if you're on the lookout for a new overdrive or a new distortion or both, definitely one that does both, I would say, check out the new Violet Pedal by JHS. Play them out, Johnny. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.